In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Datafrog's Y2HD 568-in-1 Stick NES clone console. But here's a nice little sample of what you're going to be watching. slow down. Now if that got you interested in knowing more about the system and how terrible it is, please make sure to sign in, like and share the video, and get ready to comment below some of the worst emulation you're going to see out of this console is going to be in this video. And I suffer so that you don't have to spend your hard earned money on this crap. A little bit of information on this console before we actually look at it. Its brand name is Datafrog, and apparently it claims to be a 4K retro video game system. It supports HDMI out, but it is not 4K. At best, I would say it's 720p. If you're lucky, you might get 1080p, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Now, this is built in 568 games, but that's technically a lie too, because it's just on the SD card. It comes with two wireless controllers and a little cable to hook up to your TV to power the system itself. Pretty basic combo here, but does it live up to expectations? Spoiler alert, no, not really, but I'll tell you why later. Well, after talking about this for a short period of time, I'm sure I piqued some people's interest. So we're going to go ahead and look at what's inside the box. This is exactly what you get shipped to you. You get a Y2HD data frog with a little bit of uh, information here. You get uh, two pieces of a, a game controller, so that's good. You know, uh, you go to KFC, uh, you can get a two-piece combo as well, but this one gives it to you included in the box. Uh, you do get one piece of an HDMI cable, so that might not be so good. You might want to actually get a full HDMI cable. Uh, jokes aside, it is plug and play. It's wireless TV game stick, built in, 568 games, uh, mini size and USB support. It does not have USB support. It just uses USB for power. And because this is made in China and it is not really licensed by any official game company or manufacturer over here, all this can go out the window. So you very well could be playing a device that is not compliant at all. You can see it just says data frog there and then um, we again have similar markings on the other side so there's really not much else to the box. It's actually the uh, system itself that is much more interesting and we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Here's the manual right here. You can go ahead and open it up and basically it gives you very simple instructions on how things work here and it's only these two pages because even though it looks like a very cool manual that was going to tell you all kinds of technical specifications uh, the rest of them are just in different languages you do in fact get two controllers these are NES style controllers uh, the d-pad feels very NES-esque uh, the start and select uh, buttons and it does include turbo if you could manage to get these to work on something else other than this console this might be a pretty decent deal to buy because they are wireless controllers these specifications do state that it does feature dual wireless controllers uh, but it does not specify what type of wireless is it bluetooth is it uh, is it uh, some type of infrared wireless connectivity i'm gonna say that it works very very well which i will show you in the demonstration but it is um it is not something that is very easily connected to an exterior device. Uh, neither one is labeled number one or number two, player A or player B, so it's your guess, as always, whether or not they're uh, the controller you're looking for to play a single player game. You get uh, the triple A's, not double A's. Double A's would have lasted a lot longer. These bad boys are going to burn them up faster than the Game Boy Pocket did. It also comes with this micro uh, USB cable. I believe that's micro. 
it might be mini. I, I always confuse those two, but that's what it looks like. Uh, it's a very, very short cord. This is important in the future. If you do not have a USB on your TV that outputs some type of power source, you are most definitely gonna need a longer USB cable. Next is the console itself. And here it is. No markings whatsoever other than this weird uh, diamond squarish design. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, this is an HDMI stick, very reminiscent of the Intel sticks that are sticks on a PC. Uh, but those would work much, much better. And I'll talk about that later. Here is where you put in the SD card. This comes with a very, very basic SD card. That is not 128 gigabytes. That's 128 megabytes. That's how you get that free, which is uh, crazy because that's a crazy small amount of memory. This has nothing else on it. It is just a giant hunk of plastic with exception to what the USB would plug in for the power source. Now back here is, you'd think that this is like some type of speaker because of the, the grill style that's used for the speaker. It is not, this is actually just a bunch of holes for an LED to show you that this device is on. Now here's the problem. When you plug this into the back of a TV, I'm not sure how easily you're gonna get your head back there to see if this is actually plugged in, or if the HDMI is the other direction, you're more than likely gonna be looking at this and not this to see if it's actually powered on. There is no on or off button, so you actually physically have to unplug it and plug it in each time if you wanna turn it off or on or have it continue powered over and over again without shutting it down, which is not something I would suggest. That's the device itself. This box offers nothing else other than a nice, uh, convenient holder for your controllers. And I gotta say, I do really appreciate that. It looks very nice. It goes together very, very easily. So they do score points in the design department. Bada bing, bada boom, and it's very easily transported downstairs where we are going to test this device out. So please, Join me back downstairs, and I'm going to show you the horrors of what this is. Okay, please excuse the gorilla recording style here. Uh, this is a TV, and it's one that I can actually access pretty well. And so I'm going to show you how to plug this in. Hello, kitty. Goodbye, kitty. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. I, I can't really do this at my PC because uh, it's very difficult to access the HDMI. Uh, back here, we have... A USB and an HDMI and basically what you're supposed to do is plug them in and plug the USB in and then it works it just it works is <laughs> pull Todd Howard here it just works now look at how cool that is it's wireless it has very low latency but it's very ridiculous to plug in because if you don't have a USB, then you have to get a whole nother cord for it and hope that the cord reaches a power strip of some kind. And then you have to get uh, one of those wall warts to plug the USB in and it becomes a whole affair. It's a unique concept, but if your TV doesn't output power to the USB, you're not going to be able to plug it in. Now, this is a great concept. I'm really excited for this, but I have a massive feeling that it's going to let me down, and uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know it just by the look of this. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again.
Okay. <laughs> Super Mario Island 3. What a what a what a great game here. I love Super Mario Island. <laughs> oh wow, skateboarding Mario boys. It don't get much sweeter than that. Mario 10. Oh yeah, boy. Just in case you uh, wanted to be tested for a seizure. Mhm. Mm I remember when uh, Mario was studying jujitsu. Oh yeah, of course. The scroll of fate. Yeah. That's Remember punching the fuck out of a frog? I sure did. Kicking Skeletor's ass. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Super Mario 14, boys. And they added the turtles, too. And coins. Mmm, that's some good stutter right there. Small Mario. Oh, yes. Small Mario. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Rockman X. Oh my god. I'm really not sure what to think about this. Continue in the middle of the game? Yeah, sure, why not? What is this abomination? Okay. It, is there is there no way to Oh wow. This is something right here. Will this actually work though? It will. I can't I almost can't believe this. Kind of. And I'm dead. Plays fine when there's no sprites on the screen and you're not doing anything. What's a sprite? It's those guys right there. Look at how slow it goes when they appear. Look at this. Look at how slow. I mean, look at it glitching. Why is this thing so bad? Because it doesn't have the CPU power to process this. Oh. Well, that explains a lot. And then it slows it down. Let's try classic Contra that comes with all these systems. 
Well, the craziest part about the system is Contra seems to be running just fine. Which makes no sense. some slowdown. You can hear it in the game when there's people coming around. Like, oh, that's some nasty slowdown. Oof. Is he pumping your face? I don't know. That was horrible. amazing. Do you see that? Look at the bottom, man. It's just <laughs> all wavy. I did it! Good job, Autumn. Well, that's okay. I'm getting kicked in the dick by Wang. You could say Wang's kicking my Wang. The hit detection on this is awful. You are Mock Rider! Yay! Wow, that music, the sound effects, this is awful. The glitches, wow. Complete random, it'll just, it'll be alright. Yeah, I can, it, it's, it still slows down, depending on how many enemies are, are spawning. But this one is much more tolerable, which is strange. So you clearly probably saw the issue with a lot of these ROMs being played on this system. Uh, they do not work well and the number one problem isn't control it's just how terrible it handles the speed several games speed up too fast several games slow down too much and because of this you can you can physically see that there are glitches that occur in in very strange ways especially pertaining to Super Mario Brothers 3 where you can actually see the plants coming through the pipes and the power-ups coming out of the blocks which I've never seen before in my life. And not only that, you can just tell that something's off because of the speed of the music and how fast the things are going. And it's just a terrible experience overall. This is a complete and total waste of money because anytime some action ramps up on one of these games, it just can't handle it. And that is pathetic for an NES clone system. Most NES clone systems have some terrible games on it, yes. But this one in particular has the, the games that you would come to expect. Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3. It has games like Metroid, Zelda, some old classics like Mock Rider. It has everything that you would really want for a clone NES system, but it does it terribly. Just take a look here at the Super Mario Bros. footage I recorded and listen to the sound as I compare it to the actual real Super Mario Bros. game. I wanted to do a short side-by-side -side comparison where you can see 
the real hardware running the real Super Mario Bros. 3 and the emulated hardware and how the real hardware doesn't have the same glitches nor the slowdown nor the problems with the sound as presented earlier nothing's wrong with it with the real hardware but the emulated hardware from a game console that is over 30 years old can't seem to produce the same fluidity the same gameplay another good example of this is the Mega Man footage I recorded where when you get to a section of Metal Man stage it's very perfect for testing if you have problems with the emulation because when the drills come down it slows down the game massively because there's just too much action on the screen for this system to actually deal with it's a problem with cheaply emulated systems but not a problem for a game console that's over 30 plus years old i keep harping that point because basically a pc with a pentium 2 has the ability to emulate Nintendo games properly, whereas a stick that is HDMI compliant can't do it over 30 years later. Some of you might be a bit more clever and say, well, but Proto, could you not just buy this device and take all the ROMs off there? All these ROM sites getting shut down, it's a, it's a bit more difficult to find the ROMs, so at least the price of admission would be worth getting all those ROMs, right? Well, no. For whatever reason, the ROMs seem to be more encrypted than just being able to take them off the device itself. It's very strange. It's like the programmers intentionally wrapped them into the menu and prevented people from just straight ripping them off the card. Remember, there's 568 ROMs here, and on the pictures I took of what's on the SD card, there are not 568 ROMs. So yeah, they've definitely encoded these in some way, shape, or form to be incorporated with the menu of the weird operating system that they have going on. I bought my Datafrog system for around $28 on eBay, but they go on AliExpress for between $13 to $27, depending on what you get. These systems are very common and very, very cheap and poor quality. There are clone NES consoles that work perfectly fine. I've reviewed them on this channel. You could always hack an NES classic yourself to add every single NES game, but you are paying a massive price for the classic versus a lot of the clone consoles that work just the same. Regardless to which avenue you take, you need to be aware of what you're getting yourself into with these clone consoles. Some of them work, some of them do not. And the data frog here has a lot of clone consoles over on AliExpress. There's one that has AV cords for people who do not want to use HDMI, and that's understandable, but most standard TVs use HDMI, so it's really nice to get an NES that uses HDMI. Unfortunately, this one is just an awful clone console that does it. They also have other systems that promise you a PlayStation-esque experience. 620 retro video games out of the box. Well, good lord, how can I say no to that, right? But at the end of the day, unless you're actually playing these games and testing them for gameplay, slowdown, um, the music and the sound effects are on point, you're just wasting your money. And I'm going to go ahead and return mine, or they're just going to give me my money back, because I can't even keep this as a joke console. I can't give it to anyone. It doesn't work right. So what's the final verdict on this? Don't waste your money on this system unless you know how it's going to work and if it works well. I thought this would be a unique and awesome experience to share with you guys. I thought it would be valuable for your uh, type of budget and being able to emulate things on the go, especially as a college student or in the military or somebody who's just constantly on the move. This would be a great option if it worked. But maybe someday I'll find a stick that does work that's extremely cheap. It's very difficult. Cheap, working well, and built with quality in mind. These things are very, very difficult to achieve. So you either have to sacrifice your wallet or you have to sacrifice your expectations and gameplay quality. Ah, but there's one more game. One I specifically wanted to review on this system, 
but it is god awful for you Pokemon fans. I'm telling you, you don't want to mess with this game. Are you ready? Well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 